I'm Ken Schneider. I'm a documentary film producer and editor. It's my fifth time at Sundance, and I'm here as editor of In Football We Trust, a documentary about four Polynesian high schoolers trying to make it in the NFL. I've edited about 35 or 40 long format documentaries. My wheelhouse is human rights, civil rights, character stories, war and peace, cross-cultural communications. So Erica Cohn and Tony Vinuku approached me with In Football We Trust. They had a cut, about a two hour cut, and they wanted me to do the finish. And Tony is the first Tongan American director here at Sundance. And I connected immediately with this show because it's a story, it's really a story about family and drama and aspiration. And there's a lot of father-son and mother-son drama in there. I'm a father of two teenage boys. I, I felt very deeply the stories of the families. I'm also a sports fan, and I like rich character stories. Well, I was an English major at Berkeley, and there was not much film production there to speak of. You could cobble together a class or two, and one of my mentors, one of my eventual mentors, Lonnie Ding, was a professor there at the time, but I did not take her class. So the only way to get experience there was to work at the television office and be a combination of uh, AV geek, where you're rolling TVs around to classes, but also to learn how to use a camera, a switcher, or some other basic gear, how to make tape dubs. And while I was there, I actually met Don Logston. Uh, it, this is back in, 90, in 84, rather. And the two of us have since become editors and producers of documentaries. Well, when you graduate with an English degree, people usually say, what are you going to do, go to law school or teach? And of course, the answer was neither. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I did love storytelling. And I didn't know how to get in, in San Francisco, into the film industry, because there's not really a film industry there. There are filmmakers. And I kicked around for about five or ten years, working in educational television, doing technical work, um, soldering cables, learning how to run sound, learning how to do lighting. And uh, about six, seven years out of school, some friends in L.A. invited me down to stay in their house if I would assist and edit their film. They had no money. They offered me free room and board. I spent the summer looking at 85 hours of material and watching the editor and supporting her as she edited it into a one-hour show, and I was smitten. The process of, I got it at that moment, that the process of editing unscripted documentary material was like no other art form. And I have been in documentary editing ever since. That's, that was about 20 years ago. You know, it, it's a different world today than it was when I got into editing, and the biggest difference is there was an apprenticeship path. Uh, I assisted for some nicotine-addled New York editors who taught me life lessons as well as editing lessons while I sat at their knee and learned the basics of cutting film. Because everything now is digital, uh, it's more difficult. My assistant editors are often not in the same room as I am, so that path has been severed. Uh, so I have to work hard to sort of bring up assistant editors, and I have a few times. It's been very satisfying. So for today's film school graduate, I would say uh, make sure your technical skills are up. Find side doors into a film project, if you know Photoshop or After Effects or any other apps. If you are a good organizer of material, um, if you know how to use the camera or do other technical support work, and be open because it's unlikely that you're going to get that killer job right out of film school unless you have the resources, say, to make your own film. And even then, I would say, start small, make a short. Enlist the counsel of others and try to get a mentor or two who, who have a, a portfolio of film work that they could advise you on. Challenges for me have come in, in two sizes. There's a the challenge that happens every single time I make a film or edit a film. It's inevitable that I get to a point where I say, I can't do this. I can't make this work. This footage is terrible. I don't know how to put two shots together. I'm a pretender. You get that moment of, of self-doubt and of thinking, well, how, did I, how did I get here? This is not my beautiful house. And then it, you, it catalyzes a, a different place. You get out of the valley there and pull yourself out or you're pulled out by a moment of inspiration or a moment of deep collaboration with a producer. And I love those moments. And that happens nearly every film. 
I was lucky enough to have mentors who taught me everything from how to run a media organization to how to edit film to how to record sound. And I love the mentorship path. I really value it. I think it's important to be to be able to submit your ego to someone who knows more than you. And I have benefited greatly from that. And I've been able to bring up help bring up some younger filmmakers. And actually, last year, for the first time, one of my former students hired me to edit her film. I make, I make documentary films with my wife, Marsha Jarmel, and our current film is called Havana Curveball. And it starts with a story of our kid who tried to donate baseball equipment to Cuba to repay a debt of gratitude because his grandfather was sheltered in Cuba during the Holocaust. It becomes a coming of age story because he can't give the gear, the baseball gloves and bats and mitts to Cuban kids because of the embargo. And we finished this film, we've been screening it around the country, and I screened it in Havana this last December. And I was in Havana at the moment when Presidents Obama and Castro announced that they would be, there was a thaw in the relations between our two countries. And it was a remarkable moment to be in Cuba, and it was a remarkable moment to be in Cuba with our film. And I screened it that same afternoon to a group and was immediately invited back. I'll be going on tour in Havana in April with our film. And I'm also developing another project about Cuba. And I'm looking at dance. And that's all I'll say about it. Go Bears!